and welcome to Science at Home. We're all going to be spending quite a lot of time at home over the next couple of weeks, so we decided we'd put together some videos exploring the science of everyday objects I can find around my home, and you can probably find around your home too. My name is Dan, I'm a physicist, I usually teach physics up at Maynooth University, but the university's closed, so I'm at home. You might be wondering, what is a physicist, and what is physics? Well, science can be broken up into three main parts. Biology, which is the study of living things like humans, plants, animals. Uh, chemistry, which is the study of chemical reactions. And then physics, which is pretty much the study of everything else. And what do we mean by everything else? Well, electricity, sound, light, heat, speed, atoms, molecules, stars, planets, everything you can think of has got physics in it. A physicist is a problem solver and someone who really wants to break something apart and get right down to the middle of it and understand how it works. So that's what we're going to do with everyday objects we find around the house. We're going to break them apart, look inside and really, really understand how they work. In our first episode, we're going to explore a particular object that I know you all have because you couldn't hear me if you didn't have it. To explore this object, I'm going to use an old ancient artifact I found lying around my home. Ancient artifact, please. A CD player. Ooh. Well, we don't care about CDs because who cares about CDs anymore? But what we are interested in is a speaker. All of you have a speaker somewhere in your device, either in your headphones, in your laptop, in your phone, but you're hearing my voice through a speaker. So how is a speaker able to reproduce my exact voice in the room as if I was there beside you? How does it work? Well, we're going to figure it out doing a few different steps, but the first thing we need to understand is how does sound actually work? Next object, please. Object, please. Thank you. That was a sound. What is a sound? I could make a sound myself. La. Maybe you'll try making it at home. Make a sound. Well, what was it? It's easy to take it for granted to just be like, I know it's a sound, but what is a sound? What makes a sound? Pause the video for a second and have a chat with whoever's beside you and see what they think. I hope you came up with some good ideas. Sound is just a vibration. When you hit something, it vibrates. That causes the air to vibrate. That causes your eardrum to vibrate. And that sends a message to your brain. When you talk, your vocal cords vibrate. Put your fingers against your throat and make a sound. Ah, uh, you'll feel it vibrate. So sound is just a vibration, but we can't see it. Let's take a look a little bit closer so we can actually see it. If you want to actually see the sound vibrating, you have to turn a speaker up really loud and get really close. And that is really dangerous. Don't try this at home. I'm wearing high-end ear protecting equipment and it's going to save my ears. If you do it without that equipment, you'll really damage your ears. So don't try this at home. Let's listen to some awesome Dr. Mindflip and see how the speaker actually moves. As you can see, the speaker is moving and that movement moves the air which moves my eardrum which means I hear it. We can actually see the physical vibrations and they correspond exactly to the vibrations that would have been in the recording studio when this is recorded. An exact replica of those vibrations is coming out of the speaker right now and into my ear. Right, so the speaker vibrates in exactly the same way as whatever it's playing. So if it's playing my voice, it vibrates the exact same way as my throat vibrates. If it's playing a guitar and a drums, it vibrates exactly the same way as the guitar and the drums vibrate. So it can reproduce the exact same vibrations, which means the exact same sounds. But how is it able to do that? How can it reproduce the exact same sounds? Well, just like all good physicists, we need to break this apart into its smallest parts and take a look at them to see how they work. Hammer, please.
here's our speaker. Mm hmm. This is all it is. So how does it work? Well, there's a metal disc. There's a couple of wires, and there's this kind of cardboardy surface. So this is the part that vibrates, yeah, to make the sound. There's just two wires going in and nothing else. How does it work? Well, we have to understand what electricity is first. We measure electricity with voltage. This is a 9 volt battery. This is a 1.5 volt battery. It basically means how strong the battery is. But we can measure it using this device. This is an oscilloscope. This little green dot in the center, it means that there is no voltage between these two probes. If we connect them to this battery, we can see 9 volts appear on the scale. If we count that out, we get 9 volts. If we connect the 1.5 volt battery, we'll see 1.5 volts. 1.5 volts. So as you can see, the height at which the dot goes tells us how many volts we're getting from our battery. So we can measure a voltage using this device. There's also a different type of voltage, a voltage that changes with time. Now I'm going to connect my oscilloscope up to this device here. It's called a function generator. And it makes an AC voltage. Now we see the voltage going from negative to positive, to negative to positive, changing at a constant rate. We can make it do it faster, or we can make it do it slower. So there are two different types of electricity, alternating and direct. Direct comes from batteries, alternating is what you get from the wall. So voltage can be constant or voltage can change. Okay, we're kind of getting an idea. So electricity goes through these wires and somehow makes this vibrate. Well, there's one little thing that we're missing. There's a magnet. Every speaker has a magnet. So what's a magnet got to do with making the speaker vibrate? Well, let's have a think about what a magnet actually is. So I have two different types of magnets here in front of me. A fridge magnet, I took off the fridge. It has a permanent magnet on the back. Looks like this, a little small magnet. It's always turned on and they can be pretty strong. I also have an electromagnet. So an electromagnet gets turned on when you put electricity through it. I pass electricity through this wire and I coil the wire around and around and around, around just around the metal object and it becomes a magnet. You can turn on and turn off an electromagnet. You can turn it off and on. A permanent magnet is always on, it's permanent. You might have seen electromagnets before in maybe doors at your school or something. If you have to swipe the door or press a button to open the door, it's an electromagnet that keeps it shut. When you press the button, it turns off the electromagnet and allows you to walk through. When the electricity comes back on, the magnet turns on again. So, it's important to remember that you can have electromagnets that turn on and off and permanent magnets that always stay on. And remember, magnets can be either attracted to each other or repelled from each other. So what has this got to do with a speaker? Well, if we take our speaker from earlier, and if we disassemble it a little bit, we can see that we have this papery surface here that's kind of bouncy. Yeah, you can move it like so. And you have our magnet at the back. So what about if we tear this open a little bit more and see what's inside? Let's do that now. Okay, so tear it open and the paper bit is attached onto this. What happens if we go inside here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what's inside here is a tiny little coil of wire. So this 
is an electromagnet. Inside a speaker, you have an electromagnet inside a magnet. So we have a permanent magnet here and an electromagnet here. We can turn this one off and on, and this one is always on. But how does that make sound? Okay, so here's a speaker we didn't destroy. But we know from the other speaker that this papery cardboard section is connected to an electromagnet that sits inside a permanent magnet. And we put electricity through these wires and somehow it makes it vibrate and create sound. So right now I'm putting electricity through this wire. We can see it here in this oscilloscope that we're connected to. And the electricity is changing from positive to negative at the rate at which you see this dot move up and down. Positive, negative, positive, negative positive, negative. When it's positive, the electromagnet is attracted towards the other magnet. When it's negative, it's pushed away. But we're not hearing any sound. Why is that? Well, sound vibrates really, really, really fast. So we need to turn up the rate at which our electricity is going from positive to negative. Let's do that. Now we hear a sound. The electricity is going positive, negative, positive, negative, really, really fast. So the dot has just become a straight line. And if I change that speed slightly, we get a different note. We can get a high-pitched note or a low-pitched note. And the only difference is the speed at which the electricity is changing from positive to negative. It's essentially making that electromagnet be attracted to the magnet or pushed away from the magnet. And that's how we're able to make it vibrate. And that vibration is sound. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little video. I uh, hope you learned a thing or two about how speakers work. Important thing to mention, don't ever take apart electrical equipment while it's plugged in, ever. And never do it without an adult supervision. It's really important. You can really hurt yourself. Okay, but um, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed it. It was our first little video, a little experiment doing what we could find around the house. Uh, I hope you enjoy your own little time in your own house and uh, feel free to tune in. Keep an eye out for the next videos. They should be posted online pretty soon. Thanks a lot, guys, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.